إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما In the last khutbah we touched upon the concept of khutwat al-shaytan the steps of shaytan and we looked at this concept in light of husnul dhan thinking well of other people and generally speaking the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is reported from a number of the sahaba as well the shaytan attempts to deceive us by occupying us with things that don't seem so bad but they lead to destruction and so for example steps that lead to shirk as Abdullah ibn Abbas explained how idol worship first started in humanity Bukhari rahimahullah narrates in his sahih that ibn Abbas explained how idolatry first was introduced to humanity after or just before Nuh alayhi salam, after Adam alayhi salam and how the initial intention behind those actions of preparing images and visiting these graves or visiting these images was a good intention similarly innovation, bid'ah can seem like a good thing not easy to spot sometimes and so that's a good thing for the shaitan to occupy us with another thing the Prophet strictly warned us against is minor sins he warned us against major sins and he said إِيَّاكُمْ أَوْ he said إِجْتَنِبُوا الْمُوبِقَاتِ السَّبْعَ الْمُوبِقَاتِ beware and keep away from the seven destructive sins Major sins. But he also said, Beware of belittled sins. And belittled sins are things that people don't really pay much attention to. And often they are minor sins. But lead to destruction and lead to these major destructive sins. And the Prophet said in the same hadith that I'm referring to now, Because they accumulate these belittled sins, they accumulate upon a person until they destroy them. And in another hadith, the Prophet said, Beware of belittled, belittled sins, sins that people belittle. فَإِنَّ لَهَا مِنَ اللَّهِ طَالِبًا because Allah has sent a, an angel to record each one of these sins. Each one of those sins, as small as they, as they come. And that's why some of the Salaf used to say often, look at the greatness of the one that you've disobeyed. And don't look at the insignificance or the small size of the sin that you've committed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our hearts. And to protect us from the steps of Shaytan, I call him at his man or self of Allah and he will come for self of all. In no more of the right. Alhamdulillah. The Salatu was Salam ala Rasulillah, while I early he was happy. Omni Tadavi had he lay with thee. Abdullah bin Mas'ud described minor sins muhaqqarat belittled sins with an example of a group of people who are out traveling and each one of them goes off to collect some wood so they can set up a fire have some food keep themselves warm and so on 
That one twig isn't going to do anything. But this person collects some, this person collects some, he goes to collect some, he goes to collect some, and now they can set up a large fire. He says, similarly, these minor sins, each time a person collects one here, and another one there, and another one there, they end up leading to being thrown into such a huge fire. And why is it that minor sins, even though Allah Ta'ala forgives minor sins, easily? Allah Ta'ala forgives minor sins so easily. In fact, the Quran tells us by just keeping away from major sins, Allah will forgive our minor sins. If you keep away from the major things that we have prohibited, we will remove and forgive your sayyat, your minor sins. So why is it that they're so destructive? The Prophet Sallallahu says. Because, as we know, and this is well established in the books of Aqidah, in the books of theology, the books of creed, Iman increases and decreases. It increases with good deeds and decreases with sin. The scholars, of, the scholars of Islam, when they discuss these things in the books of, of Creed, in the books of Aqidah, they don't just mention it for the sake of refuting other groups or for the sake of you know, showing something just for the sake of it, you know, a point which is not practical. They emphasize this point so that we could apply it in our day-to-day -day lives because every single minor sin weakens our heart and weakens our Iman. And when our Iman becomes weakened, when our Iman becomes weakened, our strength and our discipline against committing sin becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. That's why committing one sin makes it easier to commit the next sin and committing one sin makes it easier to, to commit the next one and so on. And Al-Imam Muslim in his Sahih describes, or rather he narrates from the Prophet wasallam that he describes this scenario exactly when he said to Al Fitan, Al Qulubi Ka'adin Hasid, Udan Udan. Fitan, trials, sins are displayed in front of the hearts. Then he said, Any heart that falls into these sins or trials, a black spot is placed into their heart. And and any heart that rejects these sins, a white spot, a brightened spot is placed into their heart until the hearts become of two types. A pure, strong heart that distinguishes between false and good and can follow that and a darkened, ruined, destroyed, dead heart that is unable to even distinguish between good and bad. And therefore these minor sins, as much as Allah Ta'ala is merciful and as much as Allah Ta'ala forgives them if we are lenient about them and we don't take them seriously they can lead to destruction and as we saw in some of the ahadith mentioned by showing some patience and may Allah grant us that patience because it's not easy to overcome that by showing some patience and some discipline Keeping away from sin becomes easier and easier. Our hearts become purer and purer. Worshipping Allah becomes more beautiful and more beautiful. Reciting the Quran becomes easier and easier. Remembering Allah becomes easier. Otherwise, with a ruined heart, all these things become a burden. And all these things become difficult. Just praying is a burden. Reading the Quran becomes a burden. Remembering Allah becomes a burden. All of that is one goes back to one reason. And that is... The damage of the hearts. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma ghfir lana wa rahamna wa afina wa afu'anna. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakiha anta khayruna zakaha. Anta waliyuha wa mawla. Ya muqadib al-qulubi thabit qulubana ala deenik. Ya musarif al-qulubi sarif qulubana ila ta'atik. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanat wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Wa qina adab al-naar. Allahumma salli ikhwana al-musarafina fi kulli makam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa qina salli.